this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills and today the plan is threefold. <laughs> I plan to bake some bread that I had prepped yesterday or the day before actually and uh, make some more chicken stock and to do that I have to go out and get some celery and some carrots because I don't have any in-house. I'm going to have to do something about that. Actually, I do have some dried carrots, but I don't have celery, so I've got to go out anyway. Uh, that'll be a quick trip. It won't be an issue. And the third thing that I want to do is dehydrate some potatoes. And I just checked my stock of potatoes, and it looks like we need a new bag of potatoes as well. So um, some to dehydrate and some just to have fresh. Yes, and I wanted to uh, dehydrate potato slices and one of the reasons is for long-term storage so that is another way that I can store potatoes certainly I do have canned potatoes and uh, I like them fresh as well obviously uh, everything's always better fresh um, but I don't have a cool dark basement to store them at and Mark and I tend to like the white potatoes and they don't store well even with the best of conditions so um, I am going to dehydrate some and see how they work out for me. Okay. Okay, another loaf of bread to go in my oven this morning. This one sat in the fridge while Mark and I were out all day yesterday. So this morning I've turned on the oven, preheated, and in it goes. I'm still experimenting, doing one small loaf a day for the time being. I don't know when I'll give that one up. <laughs> anyway, okay. The cast iron pan was also heated in the oven and yeah, both of them were actually and I'm being very cautious to try not to burn myself here. Putting the second one on as a lid and into the oven for 35 minutes. Okay, so 35 minutes have passed and I have taken the one um, bread dish off that I use as a lid and I'm just, uh, I've set the timer for another 10 minutes before I pull it out of the oven and that is just to get it a nice golden dark color. And okay, well, this one sat in the fridge, I think, for at least a day and a half. So, uh, because we were out all day yesterday. And uh, I understand that that should make it more sour tasting the longer it sits in the fridge. And okay, my 10 minutes are up. I have turned the timer off and the oven off. And now I'm going to pull the bread out and put it on a cooling rack. Once again, a nice golden color. That looks great. Okay, now we'll just let this cool off for a couple of hours. And then we will slice it up. Bread turned out yummy. I've already cut the end off and just ate it like that. <sighs> yes, I am enjoying my sourdough bread. Okay. Okay, another batch of chicken stock started. And uh, yeah, when this comes to a rolling boil, well, a boil anyway, it'll be immediately turned down and allowed to simmer all day long. <laughs> trying to keep ahead of Mark and his chicken stock and I pretty much have to make it every week in order to do that. Okay. Okay, and the other thing is that uh, when I buy celery now I cut off the ends and uh, I've just started to do that so I have two of them going. This one is today's. As you can see it's all nice and clean. This one it's been uh, developing for a little while and we already have growth and that's a lot faster than starting it from seed. I have started a lot of celery from seed. have no idea if it will 
actually um, develop properly enough that I can transplant it and put in the ground. So this is my backup. And uh, this one here seemed to have a side shoot already growing. Don't know if that will root. If it does, I will um, separate it from the main one. And of course it does grow from the center out as well. Okay, that's something else for my garden. Okay, well today I have decided that I am going to dehydrate potato slices. Uh, and you may ask why bother and uh, the reason would be that it is just another method of storing and saving um, food longer term. Now potatoes you can can them you can uh, if you've got a cold cellar you can keep them in a cold cellar these are white potatoes they don't last all that long anyway even in a good cold environment they are like fresh potatoes that pretty much have to be used up right away and these are the kind we like Mark and I. <clears throat> I also like the red potatoes and I prefer the russet when I'm going to make french fries. They make awesome french fries. So each potato has its own... Um, I mean you can you, you could interchange any potato for any recipe but some are better for some recipes than others. So um, as an overall potato we normally go with the white ones. So I could peel all these, but I'm not going to bother because the skin is very thin. So I'm just going to give these all a good scrub and then we'll start slicing. And I also have a pot of water on the stove because you do have to blanch potatoes before you dehydrate them because if you don't they turn black and ugly. <laughs> and you don't want black and ugly. Uh, so we will be uh, blanching these for a few minutes and then straining them and then dehydrating them. Okay, the important thing here now is to um, slice the potatoes as evenly as possible. So you want, uh, it really doesn't matter how thick as long as they are as the same thickness as you can possibly get them. So, and I'm going to go, you can go either way. You can go for the wider one or the more narrow. And I'm going to take the end off and try to go for, I believe that's about an eighth of an inch. And they won't be perfectly even, but you want to do the best you can. And as soon as you slice them, dunk them in cold water right away. That prevents them from turning black. So I'm going to get these all sliced up. Now I could use a mandolin, but uh, not fussy on using that thing. And perhaps with a bit of practice I will get fairly even consistent slices and the idea is to do this more than once hopefully and um, get a stash of this put away. Now I don't have a freeze dryer. I suppose you can freeze dry these as well but um, for me the cost of a freeze dryer right now is prohibitive and I really don't have a place to keep one. So I'm dehydrating. And they're not the same. They definitely produce different results, but uh, both of them do preserve food by removing water. Okay, I'm going to finish these off. Pretty much. I have transferred the potatoes in a sink full of water to keep them uh, in water, in cold water, and I have uh, replaced the bucket with ice cold water. I have a pot on the stove ready to blanch these, and I'm going to toss a bunch of them in here right now. And we just want to blanch them for a few minutes. 
probably get this back up to a boil and blanch it for a few minutes. We don't actually have to cook the potatoes, but you do somewhat, I suppose. Okay. And I'm going to need something to take them out with. Okay. So once they come out, they're going to go back into the ice water until we're ready to put them on trays. Okay, it's come back up to a boil, and I think I just want to leave it to boil for a minute or so, and uh, then we're almost ready to take it out and uh, stop the cooking by putting it in cold water. Okay, I am going to consider these ready to come out, and ready for the next batch. So, draining as much of the hot water out as possible and putting them into cold. Okay, next batch. We go in. Give these another minute to cool and then we'll put them on the trays. Okay, I'm ready to spread them on the trays, and they should be um, spread evenly, one layer only. Don't overlap them. Okay, that's one tray. Continue along. So that's approximately two trays in the one blanching, and I've got five trays all together. So um, I may do a few more potatoes, because I don't think there's as many in this batch as there was in the first one. Okay, I've got the last tray loaded up. I had a few bits left over, so anyway I decided to remove the ends and do all the slices first. So, yeah, maybe I could have done one potato less and I would have had all the ends as well, but I'm, I'm good with this. So this last tray is going on the dehydrator, and uh, we'll, so I'm going to set it at 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I have not done this, so I'm not really sure um, how long it's going to take, but what I'm going to do is uh, leave it overnight, check it in the morning, and, uh, and I may have to um, move trays up and down because I, I don't have an expensive dehydrator, so it doesn't necessarily dehydrate evenly. So, you know, I may have to move the top trays to the bottom and so forth. Anyway, we'll check it tomorrow, and we'll see how it goes. The potatoes should be translucent and dry, and if they're not, then we'll leave them for a little while longer. Okay, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me to uh, do a number of things today, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.